What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I appreciate the slow but ever-growing support. Thanks for joining me. Today we're talking about glow plugs. Already did them in my truck. Uh, check engine light was on as soon as I bought the truck. Had a couple of different glow plugs going bad on it, so we ended up and replaced those before I ever started making these videos. My buddy's right about the same 100,000 mile range on average when these things tend to start flickering on you uh, so he's on his way over so we're going to go ahead and walk through I'll show you how we replace the glow plugs on his truck so we'll see what my buddy brought over uh, this is what I stuck in my truck went with the Delcos looking for uh, part numbers or anything like that that's what I use like I said we'll see what he brought over I recommended he stick with the Delcos I think I paid like $16 a piece for these so parts you're looking at roughly $180 or so to replace all eight of them uh, some people replace just the one that's bad, some just go ahead and replace them all. Uh, like I said, I opted since I had two of them going bad already. I'm sure the others weren't too far behind. Went ahead and replaced them. So we're going to go ahead and do the same in my buddies. And there he is as we speak. So we'll go ahead and see what he's got and let's get started. So you can see guys, like I said we're doing all eight. He's got the Delco plugs just like I threw in my truck. Uh, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to get the plastic fender liners yanked out of the truck. He's working on now. Personally, if you've ever done this before, I recommend starting on the passenger side because it's easier and I will show you exactly why it's easier when we get to the driver's side because you've got all sorts of crud in your way over here. You got all the wiring harness underneath your fuse box. Everything's it's hooked into here. And you got all sorts of other components in the way over here. So you just gotta get a little bit creative, use some different extensions and whatnot to, to get them out on this side. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side since it's a little more easily accessible. Uh, another thing I recommend doing, especially depending on the mileage of your truck, I said he just drove this thing over here, it's nice and warm. Do it on a warmer truck, nobody likes to work on a hot engine, I get it, but if these things are stuck in there, or there's any issues with fighting them, it's definitely nice to have the engine warm versus trying to heat them up with a torch or something silly like that, so... We'll go ahead and get these out of the way, and then we'll proceed from there. Real quick, I was kind of skipping a step, but I forget we're not all on the same page here oh, all the time. Let's get these out. You got plastic clips all over the push pins. If you've seen me, uh, the grill replacement video, same type of thing. You need to pull all those out. Obviously, we're going to have to unscrew this mud flask because it's sandwiched in there. Another screw up here. Anyway, once you get all the fasters and everything loose from this thing, basically the, the fender liner will just fall right on out of here. All right, so while he's wrestling the driver's side fender lining, you see we already got this one yanked out. Go ahead and get up in here and show you the glow plugs. Here's why they're so easily accessible on this side. You got four laying right in there. So you notice you get the little threaded in here with the nut. These look pretty good and clean. Mine had significant rust and build up and mud all over them. But anyway, while we're in here, and he's working on that side, I'm gonna go ahead and get some penetrating oil sprayed on these soak for a minute just to help ease them I actually twisted one of those off on mine so you can see it's just a tiny little head on there it's twisted it right off it's not the end of the world you just definitely don't want to twist the entire glow plug off then you're dealing with serious issues uh, my best advice on that is even though they are snug if you feel like it's not going or you are afraid that it might twist off or slip or round off or whatever stop and try a different plan of attack yeah understatement and as you can see now he's got the driver's side fender liner out this is exactly why i say this side is a tad more difficult than the other side because you've got all that wiring harness in the way Get your hot side intercooler tube right in the way, so you just got to get creative and approach it from some different angles and definitely don't get in a hurry getting these out of there. Here's an example guys, this is the one I pulled out of my truck, you can see there was significantly more corrosion on it than what he's got on his truck here, but that little tiny small threaded portion that your nut holds the wire on to literally just twisted right off on me. So. You replace them anyway, I wouldn't be too terribly worried if that happens. Bye. Hopefully you guys can see this okay, so when my buddy works on the other side, I'm going to tackle the more difficult side here. Pull these little nuts loose. Uh, we're going to try not to 
lose those nuts because we're going to reuse them. We didn't buy new ones. These are in great shape, so there's no no reason to replace them. So the key is to get them out of there without dropping them all over the place. You know, see what we can do here. Use an eight millimeter socket. Get that little nut off of there. So you've got them buried all over the place in here. Sweet. First one out. So far. This truck's been baby, man. These things are nice and clean. They're coming out like butter. I got lucky. Perfect. Because <laughs> I had to fight some of them on my truck. Unfortunately, the one that's bad, we're getting a code for is number six, which is the second to the closest to the firewall on the other side. Yeah, <laughs> the tough side. So we'll let him continue to work on this and I'll head back to the other side and see if we can work on those some more. Not that we had any difficult getting these out. But I recommend throwing a little bit of thread lubricant on these. Help them go in smooth without galling for one and if God forbid you ever have to pull them out again, hopefully they'll come out just as smooth. We are going back in with the new glow plug. Make sure you hand tighten them, start them with your fingers. Definitely don't want to cross it or do anything stupid like that with these things. There. So we'll get the other three in and then we can get the wires and nuts back on and button this side back up and that's really all there is to it guys. So to go ahead and bust myself out, I just did exactly what I said not to do. You can see this is about the most difficult one to get to <laughs> of all of them on the truck. And of course I dropped the damn nut for that one. And it landed somewhere between the manifold and the heat shield there. So if I can't come up with a way to even see it or finagle it out of there, we may be replacing that nut after all. Got three of them anyway. You can see how tiny the little guys are. So this is a little eight millimeter, so it happens very easily. There we go. We're just getting them all buttoned up. All back together. We're halfway there. So we'll get the liner back in and finish up with the fun side. Just another tip, I know I pointed out a little nut here is an eight millimeter. You don't want to use a 12 millimeter deep socket on these use a six point don't even attempt to do it with a 12 point you don't want to like i said especially if you're fighting one of these you don't want to round that off because of that a shallow socket won't quite work on these so i think this is the one that's we said was bad yeah that's number six there it's the one we were getting the code for Seven down like butter and one to go. Of course, you saved the most difficult for last, didn't you? Yeah. Great. Oh, crap, you weren't lying. <laughs> yeah, that last one, guys, you get your steering shaft and your hot side intercooler pipe out of the way. Luckily, there's some flex with the intercooler pipe. Oh, you see yeah. it kind of flex on that a little bit so you can kind of work your, your wrench in there. A little update guys, absolutely impossible to film. So here we are on the top side of the motor. In order to get that one, it was buried right down there between the intercooler pipe, steering shaft. I actually had to come from the top here. Right where my finger's at. Yeah, and you know, reach down in here from this way because there just isn't much of any room to get a straight line at that thing through there. So anyway, we got them all out. Now we're going back in. Yeah, you just kind of got to contort those wires. What do you gotta do to get things in the where they gotta go? <sighs> Shove my big hands into that tight space. <clears throat> I 
We got two. We're halfway there. Yeah, hey guys, just getting that last fender liner bolted back into place. Got them all swapped out. We'll go ahead and get this thing fired up for the first time. Get the DTCs cleared and hopefully get it to go for at least another 100K. check engine light on I've cleared a couple times for them before cold temperatures we have just gonna keep coming back on no current DTC here's what we were coming up with Voila! Boomerang cars. So, Lord willing, problem solved, guys. So, if you need glow plugs changed, you don't want to spend 260, 360, whatever the dealership's going to charge you to do that. Like I said, we did the the Delco parts hour and a half of time for 180 bucks. Good luck to you guys. Stay tuned for more. Like I said before, I appreciate the support. appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully some of you guys find this helpful. Until next time.